In this video we'll be discussing using OBS to capture videotapes. And just one thing before I get started, I'm assuming you're capturing these videotapes for use on a modern device like a computer or a phone, and I'm assuming you're okay with them being fairly highly compressed. I'll do a separate video on lossless capture using OBS, but for now just know that I'm assuming you're going to be using these on a computer or a phone, something like that. And I'll briefly discuss the settings you'll need in case you want to author the files to a DVD. So what you'll need for this to work, you'll need a functioning device to play back your tapes, VCR or what have you. You'll need RCA cables and or an S-video cable, depending on your device. You'll need some kind of a converter, a USB converter, for example, to capture your video. I used, let's pull it up here, I used this one. It's around 40 bucks. And I use this one because it captures audio and stereo, and it also captures fields as well as frames. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but basically some of the other devices that I was trying only capture frames. So I like the fact that this one lets me deinterlace if I want to, or allows me to capture fields and frames. And it captures in stereo, so that's great. So if you purchase that device, the one from Amazon, you'll need to install the drivers either from the CD they provided or go to their website and download them. The website is here, it's startech.com. I'll, I'll link this in the description below, but you're looking for the driver, which is here in the Drivers and Downloads tab. Go ahead and download that, uh, extract the zip, and when you do that, you'll find there's a Windows folder and there's a Mac folder. I haven't tested this on a Mac. I don't have a Mac to test this on, but if you're on Windows like me, just open up the Windows folder and run the setup file here. That'll install the driver and you can go ahead and plug in the device and once the device is plugged in it should work to verify that the drivers are installed correctly you can go to the device manager you can right click on the windows icon here go to device manager that way or click on windows type in device and there's device manager there you're looking for the sound video and game controllers and specifically you want the usb 2828x audio device and usb 2828x device those are the drivers for the usb adapter that you want to work with okay and if that's all installed and ready to go you want to install obs so to do that go to obsproject.com and these buttons will take you to the individual downloads for your operating system and once that's up and running Go ahead and launch OBS. And when OBS first launches for the first time, you're gonna get this auto configuration wizard that pops up automatically. Go ahead and cancel out of it. You don't need to use this. We're not using OBS in the way it's traditionally used. So just cancel out of that. And let's discuss the settings within OBS that you're gonna be concerned with. So two ways to get to the settings. You can go to the settings button here or go to file and choose settings. Okay, so these are the settings. So the first thing to go to is the output tab. And you wanna to go to the recording tab. And then output mode, make sure you choose advanced. It's probably defaulting to simple. You want advanced. Standard is the type you want for this. Here's your recording path. So when you hit this, that is where your file will be saved on your computer. So just browse to the location where you want your file to be saved wherever that may be, go ahead and select folder, and that's all set. You can choose to generate a file name without space. You don't have to, I did. The recording format for what we're trying to do here is MP4. There's other options here, but we're gonna choose MP4 for this. Audio track, you want one, and that's gonna be one track that is stereo, so it's okay. You don't have to have two tracks for stereo. It'll be one track that is stereo. For the encoder, choose X.264. There's other options in here depending on your computer. Look, I have some here, but everyone by default gets X.264. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use that. You don't need to rescale the output. We'll get into that in a, little, in a little bit. And then rate control, you want CBR. It might have defaulted to CRF. Choose CBR. And for the purposes of what we're trying to do here, which is a compressed MP4 file, you can type in 3500 KB. PS. So just type in 3500. All right. You don't need to use custom buffer size. Keyframe interval, zero. CPU usage. This is a setting that basically determines how hard your processor is working as it digitizes this material. So oddly enough, slower means more work being done by the processor. 
So if you're noticing as you're recording that your recordings are stuttering or the playback is stuttering, you may have this set to a, you know, a placebo or a very slow. So just play with these depending on what's happening on your machine. I'll choose medium for that. Profiles none and tune you want film. And this you can leave blank. And then one more thing in here, if you're recording for the use of burning a DVD, the recording format you want to use is TS and your bit rate is going to be around 7,500. But I am going to stick with, for this tutorial, I'll stick with uh, 3,500 and I'll stick with MP4 for my file type. And then we'll go to the audio tab. For audio bit rate, I've chosen 320. You can choose 192 if you want. Obviously the higher the number, the higher the quality. So if you want to do 320, it's fine. Then go to the audio section. Make sure sample rate's 48 kilohertz and stereo. Next, go to video. And you're going to want to type in, this is not something that is a, is a drop down option. So you want to type in 720 by 480. Okay, output scaled resolution. This is the resolution of your file that's going to be saved by OBS. So there's two things you can do here. If you're going to play this back on a modern device like a computer or a smartphone, or you're putting this on YouTube, something like that, you want to use square pixels. And to do that, you'll type in 720 by 540, and that's going to be a square pixel aspect ratio. For PAL, you'll type in 768 by 576, and that'll be square pixel aspect for PAL but I'm using NTSC, so I'll keep mine at 720 by 540. If you're gonna be using this for creating files for authoring a DVD, you can keep this at 720 by 480, okay? But for these purposes and what I'm talking about in this tutorial, I'm gonna use 720 by 540. All right, downscale filter, you can keep it as is. And then common FPS values, if you're using NTSC, this should be 2997. If you're using PAL, this should be 25 pal. All right, we're gonna stick with 29.97 for that. Okay, and the last thing in here is go to the advanced settings. And you're interested in this area up here where it says video. So because you're capturing analog video, the color space should be 601. Color format can stay at NV12, but 601 is the main thing here. 709 is HD, 601 is SD color space. That's the main thing. So 601 is what you want. And color range, color range on SD video is actually partial. So choose partial and then click apply, click okay. And your settings are all set. All right, so you wanna add a video source now. And to do that, click on the plus icon here and you wanna choose video capture device. So click on that and then name your device. I'm gonna call mine VHS capture. You can call yours whatever you like. Make sure make source visible is checked and push okay. And this window pops up and this is where you pick the device you're going to use to capture your video. So if you purchase the device I recommended for Amazon, you're going to choose the USB 2828X device here. Okay, so there we see a signal from my VCR. It's not playing anything, so it's showing blue. So the first thing we want to do here is click on configure crossbar and this will let us choose our input source, whether it's uh, S-Video or RCA, and that's right here. So right now we have video composite, and I'm actually using an RCA cable for this, so that's correct. But if I was using S-Video, I would choose S-Video in, but I'm not, I'm choosing composite here because I'm using RCA. And the rest of this you can leave alone. You're just concerned with whether you're using RCA or S-Video, and that's where you would choose that. So click OK. And the next thing we want to do is click on configure video. All right. So click on VCR input. And then if you're using NTSC, you can leave it at NTSC M. If you're using PAL, there are options in here for PAL and then pick the flavor or type of PAL you're using. If you're familiar, if not, you may need to look it up, but those options are all in here. I'm going to stick with NTSC for mine. And then you have some options in here for brightness, contrast, hue, saturation. So if you need to play with these settings, they are in here. And then there's some other options in here. I really don't mess with these too much. I do sometimes play with the brightness, contrast settings, etc. in this menu. So once that's all set up, click OK. And then where it says 
resolution slash FPS type, you're going to want to pick custom. So choose custom. For resolution, as soon as I push 7, it puts in 720 by 480 automatically. And then I'll choose 2997 from the FPS dropdown. Let's resize this a bit so we can see more of the interface. Okay. Video format, any is fine. Color space, you want 601. Color range, you want partial. Buffering, that's fine. Uh, this is important where it says use custom audio device. When I click use custom audio device, this will actually add a custom audio device in my OBS interface. And I'll show you that in a second. So click that. And then make sure you're choosing the correct audio device. In this case, we're going to want line USB 2828X audio device. That's the StarTech.com device. So choose that. Click OK. And here we go. So here's our video capture. That's working. I have a blue screen. And here's my VHS capture audio. And I'll push play here in a second, and you'll see levels moving in this section here. I'll go ahead and push play on my VCR. And you can see video and audio are both playing. A couple things here. If you don't like these black bars on the side, that's called overscan. You can actually resize this output. Just hold the shift key down to maintain the aspect ratio. Grab these little handles and then drag to the right on this side. Drag to the left on this side until the black bars disappear. And then if you want to put this back to where it was, right click, choose transform, and choose fit to screen, and it puts it right back. Okay. Now the other thing here, I'm going to push stop real quick. The other thing here is if you want, you can choose to have OBS deinterlace your footage. I'm not going to really get into what interlacing is too deeply, but basically in lots of flavors of video, frames are made up of two fields. Essentially what happens is that you get these weird lines, these weird jagged lines when there's a lot of movement. So you probably don't want to have that happening in your resulting file. So you can choose to deinterlace it. And the way to do that is to click on your video source, right click, go to deinterlacing and choose Yadif 2X and make sure that top field first is checked if you're using the device I recommended. So Yadif 2X, turn that on and now deinterlacing is turned on. If you're capturing this for authoring a DVD, you don't need to choose deinterlacing. You actually want the file to be interlaced for your DVD playback. It'll still work if it's deinterlaced, but traditionally when you're authoring a DVD, the files are interlaced. All right, so next is your audio mixer. I'm going to push play again. And you should see levels. As you can see here, I'm seeing levels and they're playing in stereo. If you want to hear the audio, this little gear icon here, click on that, go to advanced audio properties and choose monitor and output. When I click this, you're going to hear audio. He thought that Metallica would be the perfect band to put together with the symphony orchestra. So although I also were. like, I also like the answer that uh, Metallica hasn't hit the grandparents demo yet. Well, well it's the one thing from that back off. So if you want to hear your audio as you play your video back, that's how you would do it. Again, that's advanced audio properties, choose monitor and output. Metallica song ever written. We sat with him for like, Okay, and audio will be playing. All right, so if you're ready to record, everything's all set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna push play, and I'll just start recording. And you can see here it's recording. Record your, the amount of time it's recorded so far is being counted here. The start recording button turned into a stop recording button. And I can also pause it if I want. All right. And when I'm done, just push stop recording. Okay. You stop my playback. And then I'll go find my file. And where was that file again? Well, that was in my settings under output recording right here. That's where I'll find my file. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that path. Open Windows Explorer. And I'll just paste that path in. And let's view details, sort by date, and there is my recording right there. Double click. The 20 best of those. So it was a long process. It took about a year and a half to get this thing together, but and we're about it. to world premiere um, Hero. All right, so that worked. And that is how you record video using OBS. And that should be enough to get you going. And I hope this helped you guys.